Hello, Mike Akko, and mahalo for joining today's uh, Friday, February 11th, 2022 at 1.30 p.m. Sorry, we're a little bit late. We were in a joint uh, hearing with the health committee. But uh, here we are in 224 and also video conferencing, which includes the audio and video of remote participants that's being streamed live on YouTube. You'll find links to viewing options for all Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website, capital.hawaii.gov. And in the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 1.30 p.m. on Monday, February 14th during our AEN via video conference time slot and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. Uh, for testifiers, all testifier audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it's your turn to testify. And because of our 90 minute time limit for each of the AEN hearings, there'll be a two minute time limit for all testifiers and we'll have a virtual countdown timer on the Zoom screen. So please be aware of the timer. I'll be announcing only the testifiers who will be providing testimony via Zoom. And for the complete list of testifiers, along with all the written testimony, please go to the legislature's website and you'll find a link on the status page for the measure. And we apologize if the closed captioning does not accurately transcribe the names. So first up, uh, let's see, is SB 2556 repeals chapter 157, commonly referred to as the milk Control Act. All right, let's see here. Testimony on my list. Okay, is the Department of Agriculture. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Phyllis Shimabukuro Geyser, Chairperson, Hawaii Department of Ag. Uh, we stand on our written testimony, offering comments and recommendations. Mahalo. Thank you, Phyllis. Next is Chris Manfredi from the Hawaii Coffee Association. Aloha, Chair Gabbard, Vice Aloha. Chair, members of the committee, Hawaii Coffee Association. I'm Chris Manfredi, Executive Director. We stand on our written testimony and support. We believe the state should be doing all it can to encourage uh, locally produced high quality dairy products. Seems that chapter 157 is uh, a major barrier to that. We're available for questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Chris. Next is Michelle Galimba. Um, Aloha, Chair Gabbard and committee members. Um, my name is Michelle Galimba. I'm a cattle rancher in Kau on Hawaii Island. However, I grew up on dairy farms. Um, and so have run into the Milk Control Act numerous times in my life, um, not only as the daughter of a dairy farmer, but as an advocate for agriculture in Hawaii. Um, I will largely stand on my written testimony, but I would like to move beyond it a bit. Having read testimony from others, I um, I am strongly in agreement with the suggested language of the AG. I think that's a fantastic um, solution. Let's use the money that's there that I thought got raided last year, but it's still there. So this is fantastic. Let's use that to support our remaining dairy farmer and support some new ones, hopefully. Um, and sunset this, it'll give us give everyone some time to look at, you know, repealing this, which I think is the way to go. And let's sunset it in 2023, as they suggest. So thank you for the opportunity to testify. And I also am available for questions. Okay, thank you very much. Members, are there any questions? Okay. Uh, moving on to the next measure, SB 2435, relating to the important agriculture land qualified ag cost tax credit, uh, clarifies that a taxpayer may claim the important agriculture land qualified agricultural cost tax credit no earlier than the third taxable year after application for first year certification of the credit. It extends the time that the Department of Ag may certify the important ag land qualified agricultural cost tax credit from 1231-21 to 1231-2031. Uh, 
And first up on our testifiers is Isaac Choi from the Department of Taxation. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair members, Josh Michaels on behalf of the Director of Tax. Uh, the Department will stand on its testimony offering comments. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks very much. Thank you. Next is uh, Department of Ag. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. We stand on our written testimony and support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Tom Yamachika for the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Good afternoon, Chair and committee members. This is Jade McMillan. On behalf of Tom Yamachika and the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, we will stand on our written comment uh, submitted on this measure. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Brian Miyamoto from the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Nishiara, members of the committee. Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. We'll stand on a written testimony in support of this measure. Okay, thank you. And um, that's it on the testifiers. Uh, any questions, members? Moving on to SB 2962, proposing an amendment to Article One of the Constitution of the State of Hawaii to recognize and protect the inherent and inalienable right of all people to clean water and air and healthy ecosystems, including climate, and to the preservation of the natural, cultural, scenic, and healthful qualities of the environment. Proposes a constitutional amendment that recognizes and protects for present and future generations the inherent and inalienable right of all people to clean water and air and healthy ecosystems, including climate, and to the preservation of the natural, cultural, scenic, and healthful qualities of the environment, and provides that the state and its subdivision shall protect and shall not infringe upon these rights. First up is DLNR David Smith. Hello, Chair. Uh, this is Marigold Zoll. I'm acting for um, David Smith. Um, on behalf of the department, we stand on our written testimony. Um, and Chair Case would like to provide some comments once she gets admitted into the room. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next is Leah Laramie from DLNR. Leah, are you here? Are you with us? Okay, next is uh, Director Suzanne Case. You're on, Chair Case. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Um, you, uh, Suzanne Case, Chair, Department of Land and Natural Resources. Uh, thank you, um, Chair, members of the committee. And you have our written testimony. Um, I did want to make some comments. Um, and, and that is that um, th this, this bill, you know, of course, everybody wants a clean and healthy environment. I do. I spent my whole life dedicated to it. Um, but th this bill does have uh, problems procedurally in a number of ways. And so first of all, it, it's unnecessary. The Hawaii constitution already provides very similar rights here. And it, it basically takes away um, legislative and executive discretion in decision-making and transfers it to the courts by making this uh, a, an absolute environmental right instead of what the constitution provides now, which is a right to a clean and healthy environment uh, as tied to the laws that you make and uh, the executive implements. Um, and so it, it can have unintended consequences. Uh, if, if anyone can challenge any law or decision based on uh, their assertion of, a, of impact to their, their right to a clean and healthy environment, then uh, lots of projects that require some balancing um, along that lines could be derailed like parks and affordable house, housing and renewable energy and agriculture and you know, anything like that. It also can be very unworkable to in, implement administratively if it um, gr greatly expands the bases on which you can claim a right to uh, a contested case or can litigate. And those things are extremely cost costly. Um, we, we, we try to be very careful with them, but it can cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars and a huge amount of staff time, which comes from department budgets. So um, for those reasons, we respectfully oppose this measure. Thank you. Hello, Chair Case. Next is Marigold Zoll from DLNR. 
also in opposition. Uh, next is Robin Chun, Deputy Attorney General. Not present. Next is Ron. Wait, wait, I'm here. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, my name is Robin Chen. I'm Deputy Attorney General. We've submitted written comments on this bill, and I'm prepared to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Robin. Next is Rodney Funakoshi, the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Danielle, uh, Aloha. Okay, thank you. Oh. Thank you. Yes. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Danielle Bass, State Sustainability Coordinator in the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. We wanted to just share with you that we do support the intent of this measure. Um, it does align with the intention and the vision of the Hawaii State Planning Act, inclusive of the priority guidelines set forth in the Hawaii State Planning Act. And of course, we do defer to the Department of Attorney General um, in relation to using the correct language and placement of the proposed amendment within the Hawaii State Constitution and how uh, the question should be printed on the ballot. I'm available for any questions, mahalo. Thank you, Danielle. Next is Dave Mullenix from uh, Our Revolution Hawaii. <clears throat> Aloha. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair, and thank you for your leadership on, uh, on dealing with the climate. We really appreciate your efforts. Uh, my name is David Mullenix, representing Our Revolution Hawaii, and on behalf of our 5,000 members and supporters statewide, we stand in strong support of SB 2962, a green constitutional amendment. The Hawaii Constitution does currently protect the environment, but only to the extent provided by laws and implemented by agencies. That's not enough when we are facing increasing environmental problems. The Green Constitution Amendment is really needed right now. Uh, climate change is already here and the devastating effects of it are growing with larger and more destructive hurricanes, extreme heat making some places on earth unlivable and mass extinction of species. We are now on a precipice towards our own extinction. The uh, Green Constitution Amendment would raise up our environmental rights and place them in our Bill of Rights as an equal footing with other fundamental rights, such as freedom of speech. With the Green Amendment, government agencies would not, would need to consider our environmental rights when executing their duties. It would not be an afterthought as it is now. For example, the protection of our environmental rights would have been considered prior to issuance of permits for the Red Hill fuel, for, fuel storage tanks that sit just 100 feet above our essential drinking water aquifer. We need clean water, clean air, a healthful environment and climate Having a Green Amendment would support and secure better government decision-making that avoids environmental pollution and degradation. The sooner these rights are recognized, the better off the future for our children will be. I uh, thank you very much for your consideration. Also, Ted Bolin, unfortunately, couldn't be here, and he could answer DLNR's concerns, but he wasn't able to log in. So um, I would say suggest that if you have any questions about that, uh, Ted Bolin be the one to talk to. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you very much, Dave. Next is Christopher Dean from Clean the Pacific. Christopher, not present. Next is Matthew Geyer. Aloha, Chair Gavard, members of the committee. Pennsylvania has had an environmental rights amendment. The, the Environmental Rights Amendment in Pennsylvania is the people have a right to clean air, pure water, and the preservation of the natural, scenic, and historic aesthetic values of the environment. Pennsylvania's public natural resources are the common property of all the people, including generations yet to come. Sounds a lot like what we're trying to do here, right? And they've had that on the books since 1971. So, for those who want to say that you know this amendment is going to cause all these problems, I, they've had that on the book since 1971. Come on, people, this is common sense. We need to make it happen. Thank you for your time. Next is John Kawamoto. Not present, Chair. Okay, so let's see. Uh, members, are there any questions? There were 46 in support for this uh, measure and four opposed. Any questions? 
All right, let's move on to the next measure. Uh, SB 2947, authorizing the Department of Ag to plan, design, construct, operate, manage, maintain, repair, demolish, and remove infrastructure on any lands under the jurisdiction of the department to support and promote ag. Establishes the Agricultural Enterprise Program. First is uh, Chair Case from DLNR. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chair Russell Tsuji for the department. The uh, department submitted testimony and will stand on its uh, comments to this bill. Uh, we do note that uh, the, the permissive nature of this um, transfer language is very similar to Act 90, and we just want to make sure that it does not turn into a subsequent mandate of transferring ag lands. As you know, the department has already transferred 19,000 acres over to the just the department bag, which does not include the other many thousands of acres we transferred to ADC in uh, Kauai and, and Waihawa. Um, there really isn't any, most of the lands are, have been transferred or will be or, or in the process of being transferred or our lands that the department wants to hold on to. And there really isn't a third category of ag lands available out there. So we just wanted to note that for the record uh, and available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Next is Kevin Moore, also from DLNR. He, uh, he's, he's with me, Chair. Thank okay. You. All right, thank you. Uh, Phyllis uh, Geyser from Department of Ag. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. The department stands on its written testimony strongly supporting this measure. And uh, I have uh, Deputy Morris Atta available to answer any questions. Mahalo. Thank you, Phyllis. Ian Hirokawa. Also Not present, yeah, Chair. Again, again, Chair, he was with DLNR. Thank you. Great. All right, thank you. Micah Munakata from Ulupono Initiative. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard. Uh, just wanted to stand on our testimony in strong support of this measure. Thank you. Thank you, Micah. Ryan Miyamoto from the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair, members of the committee. The Hawaii Farm Bureau will stand on its written testimony in support. Thank you. Next is Kendall Matsuyoshi from Local Food Coalition. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Nishihara, and members of the committee. Uh, Kendall Matsuyoshi on behalf of the Local Food Coalition. Uh, we'll stand on our testimony in support of the measure. Thank you. Okay, and that's all for our testifiers. There were 12 in support and zero opposed. Members, are there any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to our next measure, SB 3363, relating to wastewater treatment improvements in the County of Hawaii authorizes issuance of general obligation bonds for replacements to the water capturing system in the Hilo water treatment plant to capture recycled water, natural gases, and fertilizer for agricultural purposes. First up is Brenda Yokipa Moses and Eric Takamura from the Hawaii County Department of Environmental Management. Aloha, Chair Gabbard. I'm Brenda Yokepa Moses, the Deputy Aloha. Director with the Department of Environmental Management, and I stand in support of SB 3363 as detailed in my written testimony. I just wanted to take a few moments to elaborate and thank um, Senator Ocasio for really championing this bill. She has been to our Hilo wastewater treatment facility probably more times than she has liked to admit, um, but she can truly appreciate gravity of the situation we are facing there. Uh, we are fortunate to have a mayor that is willing to tackle these problems that have been pushed aside for over a decade. Um, and also have Director Mansoor that has expertise 40 years plus in the wastewater um, development and systems to lead the way. Now we just need the funding. So please, please um, take great consideration in this, um, this bill our environment depends on it. I do have Dr. Takamura with us today and he can answer any questions if you have any technical questions. Thank you for the time. Thank you very much, Brenda. Next is Dan Kochi from the United Public, uh, Public Workers. UPW. Not present, Chair. Not present. Next is Christopher Dean from Recycle Hawaii. Not present, Chair. 
Okay. Members, are there any questions? Sure, I had a question. Sure. Senator Rhodes. Um, it's a technical question, really. So doesn't don't the counties have the authority to issue their own their own general obligation bonds? Uh, somebody who Brenda would like to respond or Brenda or uh... Yeah, um, yes. Yes, we do. 50 million, 150 million to take to get this facility up and running is more than half the county of Hawaii budget for one department. So um, it's it's hard. The, it's a hard the, ask to the have debt, the county. The debt services or the or the overall amount? The overall amount for so our what, county of how Hawaii. Much, in, how much would the debt service be a year? So I don't have the finance department on with us, but overall budget for the county of Hawaii is somewhere in $400 million. And we're looking at taking half, or more than half of that just for a wastewater treatment plant. This is only one plant. We have many others that are failing, have failing infrastructures. We have administrative orders on consent. So we have a lot on our plate right now. So we, we definitely need the support um, outside of the county budget. Okay, all right, thanks, Chair. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on 3363, there were 24 in support and one opposed. Okay, let's see, moving on to SB 2353 relating to farms creates an exclusion from income tax for the lesser of a percentage of gross annual income or amount of gross annual income earned by a farmer from farming activities. Uh, let's see. First up is Department of Ag. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Uh, we stand on a written testimony supporting the intent and deferring to the Department of Taxation. Mahalo. Thank you. And speaking of the Department of Taxation, Isaac Choi. Good afternoon again, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members. Uh, the Department will stand on a testimony offering comments. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Brian Miyamoto from the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair. Members of the committee, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. We'll stand on our written testimony and support. Thank you, Brian. Next is Tom Yamachika from the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Good afternoon. Again, this is Jay McMillan on behalf of Tom Yamachika and Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We will stand on our written comments and meet on this measure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I think that's it. Members, any questions? Chair, um, I didn't have the We have Mayor Rock. Yeah, we have in the, in the waiting room for the prior, but they weren't let into the room. Sorry about that. Okay. You were breaking up there, Senator Ocasio. I'm sorry. Didn't quite get what Sorry, you said. Sir, I just wanted to let you know that the, the mayor um, of Hawaii County was, Ms. Roth was waiting in the um, waiting room, but wasn't let in. Oh. Um, you had wanted to testify on the past. I'm not sure if he's still there, but. Uh, if he's still there, we could accommodate him. Okay. All right, uh, moving on to, there he is. Hey, Mayor, aloha. Turn off your mic, uh, on your mic. You're muted, Mayor. Can't hear you, you gotta unmute. Can you hear me now? Now we can, good. Sorry about that. Aloha and thank you very much for, for allowing me in. Mitch Roth, Hawaii County Mayor. Um, and just, you know, wanted to put out how important this bill is. You, you have my testimony, um, but, you know, part of the problem here is this, this uh, the concrete that built this structure is eroding. And so if we were to have a major earthquake, um, it is possible that you could have millions of gallons of sewage entering into our ocean, not only affecting uh, Hilo and the county of Hawaii, but the state of Hawaii and potentially other places. So just, we really support this and we could really use your assistance on this matter, and I'm happy to answer any other questions. The 3363, uh, there was some difficulty with the mayor getting in from the waiting room, so we shall move on. If there's any questions, we are in SB 2353 now, and 
Any questions for our testifiers there? All right, moving on to SB 2357, uh, relating to the issuance of special purpose revenue bonds to assist Maui Grown Coffee. Inc. extends the authorization to issue special purpose revenue bonds to assist Maui Grown Coffee Inc. with the operation and expansion of its farm and mill. Uh, 2357. First up is Maui Grown Coffee, James Falconer. Hello, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair oh, Ishihara, members of the committee. My name is Kimo Falconer. I'm the president of Maui Grown Coffee and I stand on my testimony and support as submitted. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next is Chris Manfredi, Hawaii Coffee Association. Not present. Members, are there any questions? Seeing none, we shall move on to the next measure, SB 2837. Uh, Oh, and on the last one, SB 2357, there were five in support and zero opposed. So on SB 2837, that's related to the spaying and neutering of animals, establishes a spay and neuter special fund and allows funds from an income tax checkoff to be deposited into the special fund. Uh, first up is Craig Hurai. Good afternoon, Senator, committee members. I'm Craig Hurai, Director of Finance. The Department of Budget and Finance opposes this measure because we do not believe we are the appropriate agency to administer it. BNF does not possess the required subject matter expertise on spaying and neutering animals or any other related veterinary services which do not fall under the purview of this department. Uh, thank you, Senator. Thank I'm you. To answer questions. Thank you very much. Next is Isaac Choi from the Department of Taxation. Thank you again, Chair, Vice Chair members. Josh Michaels on behalf of the Director. We'll stand on our testimony offering comments. Thank you. Uh, Randall Nishiyama, Deputy AG. I am, I am Deputy Attorney General Randall Nishiyama. We have provided our written comments and I am available for your questions. Thank you, Randall. Next is Philoshima Bokoro Geyser, Department of Ag. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. We stand on our written testimony and we defer to budget and finance. Thank you, Phyllis. Next is Michael Goliou, Jr. from the Stonewall Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Good afternoon, uh, Senators. Michael Goliou, Jr., Chair of the Stonewall Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Uh, we submitted an updated uh, testimony that asked for four amendments throughout the bill to recognize marriage equality because uh, married couples, not just a husband and a wife anymore, thanks to the special session in 2013. Um, so we hope that you will accept those amendments. We also would like to um, look at, uh, so we, we're always there fighting for the underdog, the little guy in the room. Um, and so we hope that if this bill moves forward, that, they, that these funds be made available, not to just, not to the ones that already have the county contracts or the state contracts, but uh, to the mom and pop uh, uh nonprofits out there that are doing this hard work of spaying and neutering as well uh, to doing uh, to keep the our feral cat and dog popula population down so on those notes we encourage you we ask you to make these amendments so we can hopefully support this bill fully as it moves forward mahalo thank you Michael next is Tom Yamachika for tax foundation of Hawaii good afternoon sir Jay McMillan on behalf of Tom Yamachika and tax foundation of Hawaii we will stand on our written comments submitted on the Thank you. Thank you. Next is Stephanie Kendrick from the Hawaiian Humane Society. Aloha, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Nishimoto, committee members. Stephanie Kendrick with the Hawaiian Humane Society. You have our written testimony in enthusiastic support of this measure. Um, I just want to offer a few comments. I'll be brief. Pet animal and free roaming cat overpopulation are serious issues across our state. Spay neuter is hands down the most cost effective way to address these issues and to reduce animal suffering. You know, Oahu used to be in pretty good shape in terms of this funding. Uh, the city and county of Honolulu devoted funds to subsidize spay neuter for free roaming cats and the pets of residents on public assistance. Then COVID hit. Uh, demand for these services soared 
and program funds were rapidly depleted, leaving low-income pet owners and the social service agencies that assist them scrambling and dampening efforts to spay, neuter, free roaming cats. Even fewer resources exist in our neighbor island counties. And I, I appreciate Michael's re remarks. I, I, this, this grant funding opportunity is very much intended to help the smaller organizations uh, who scramble to find funds on a regular basis. The Hawaiian Humane Society is a member of the Hawaii Animal Welfare Association, which does include the largest animal welfare organizations in each county. And I know you've received testimony and support from all of them. We're also a member of the Oahu Animal Welfare Alliance, which is a broad consortium of entities devoted to animal welfare right here on Oahu. Both groups have identified increased access to no fee or low fee spay neuter as one of the greatest unmet needs to better care for our state's animals and to assist struggling pet owners. Hardworking nonprofits and volunteers around our state who are committed to this mission would benefit by having this grant funding available to support their work. So I really urge the committee to pass SB 2837. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Steph. Next is Maui Humane Society. In support, anyone from Maui Humane Society? Yeah. Hi. Okay. Hi, I'm Jenny Miller. I'm with the Maui Humane Society. We strongly support this bill. Um, we currently spay neuter over 8,000 cats um, and dogs every year at the Humane Society. Of those, we last year we spay neutered over 3,800 free roaming cats uh, with an estimated 40,000 cats on Maui, uh, free roaming cats on Maui. Um, 3,800 is just a drop in the bucket. Right now, we are currently out of funding for spay neuter and for continuing to offer low cost spay neuter to pet owners. We have actually just this month increased the fees for owned pets. It's still cheaper than uh, going to a veterinary service, but without the funding to continue to provide low cost and free spay neuter for community cats as well as owned cats, we're just going to continue growing the problem of feral cats on the island. This funding is actually the most essential funding to our organization. It impacts every single department and um, the functioning of our organization because we are so inundated with cats. Um, we really feel that if we were able to get more funding um, from the state via the, um, the option for people to opt in for this $5, it would provide a, a tremendous um, benefit to the whole community that's dealing with this cat problem. And um, we support it tremendously. Great, thank you very much. Next is Adelia Huang from the Alliance for Contraception in Cats and Dogs. Aloha, Chairman Gabbard and committee members. Um, my name is Adelia Huang, and on behalf of the Alliance for Contraception in Cats and Dogs, we do stand on our written testimony in support of this bill. However, I would like to draw your attention to our request for some language changes that we believe would improve the bill to ensure non-surgical sterilization methods can be considered under the fund. Um, specifically, we, um, the phrase spay and neuter is colloquially used in place of sterilize. And for veterinarians, this currently means surgically removing an animal's reproductive organs. Um, because we are um, in support of non-surgical sterilization for cats and dogs, as it would greatly improve access for many um, people, we do want to make sure that the terms that are used in this bill do afford for um, that consideration of non-surgical sterilants um, and being able to remove the word surgery from the bill and there's one instance um, would be a way to help ensure that happens or alternatively to replace the terms spay neuter with sterilize which is just a broader term um, that doesn't specify whether or not the procedure is surgical or not. Um, I welcome any questions. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see. I believe that's got all of our testifiers. Uh, there were 104 in support and three opposed. So members, are there any questions for our testifiers? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to SB 2950. Let's see. Relating to agricultural inspection fees, uh, imposes an inspection fee on certain imported agricultural products to be deposited into a special fund and expended by the Department of Agriculture. And first up is Department of Ag. 
Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, we stand on our written testimony. Um, we support the measure, or the intent of the measure, but we defer to the Office of the Attorney General. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis. Next is uh, Deputy Attorney General, Jody Yee and Brian Yee. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. Uh, we, we submitted in our testimony that we have concerns that the bill as written would uh, be preempted by the Federal Airline Deregulation Act and the Anti-Head Tax Act. So we suggested that if the um, intention is to uh, offer the fee, that um, we suggested some language. And I'm willing to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Next is Marigold Zoll from the DLNR. You're muted, Marigold. Excuse me. <laughs> Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Um, the department stands on our written support of the measure, but we defer to the Department of Agriculture. And I have um, staff available for comments if you have questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marigold. Next is Chelsea Arnott. She's with the Department of Land and Natural Resources too. Thanks. And David Smith as well? Yes. Okay, so all are in support. Next is Tom Yamachika from the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Good afternoon, Jane McMillan on behalf of Tom Yamachika and the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Uh, written, uh, offering comments on the measure, uh, noting that we have uh, mentioned the same concerns regarding the airlines deregulation and the head tax act by the attorney general. Thank you. Okay. And so uh, there were a total of three in support and two opposed. Uh, are there any questions, members? Okay, moving on to the last measure on our agenda. Uh, SB 2988, relating to the Department of Agriculture appropriates funds to the Department of Ag for the control and mitigation of the two-line spittle bug and for recovery efforts for lands damaged by the two-line spittle bug. First up is Department of Ag. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. We stand in support of this measure. Mahalo. Thank you. Next is Nicole Galase from the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. Thank you, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Nishihara, and members of the committee. We stand on our written testimony in support of this measure. And I just wanna reiterate that the ranchers are really appreciative that the legislature sees this as an issue that needs to be addressed statewide as an issue for everyone, not just ranchers. They're the ones at the forefront, but we really wanna be able to control this species uh, before it can spread any further. Mahalo. Um, I also want to say, I, I apologize, we did testify in support of SB 2947, but I must have clicked um, written testimony. Um, we stand on that testimony in support. Mahalo. Thank you, Nicole. Next is Kendall Matsuyoshi from the Local Food Coalition. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard. Uh, Kendall Matsuyoshi on behalf of the Local Food Coalition. Uh, we'll stand on our testimony in support of the measure. Thank you. Thank you, Kendall. Next is Mike Munikata from Ulupono Initiative. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Nishihara, members of the committee. Ulupono Initiative will stand on its testimony and support. Thank you. Thank you, Micah. And next is Brian Miyamoto uh, from the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. We'll also stand on our testimony and support. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, there were, uh, that's all of our testifiers. Uh, there were 19 in support, zero opposed. Uh, members, are there any questions? Okay, so uh, if uh, we're going to uh, briefly recess and try to get some decision making done, we are already past our time, but we were granted a 10 minute extension. So we'll see what we can get done during that time. So. Convening the 30 AEN. Uh, 
So for the public, we, uh, we have a hard stop in five minutes at 2.40. Uh, so we'll get through as far as the um, decision-making that we can today. And if we can't get to all the bills, I will uh, announce when we'll roll over the, the uh, time, date and time that we'll roll over to the uh, decision-making for those, uh, those measures. Starting off with the SB 2556 relating to milk production, um, comment, uh, basically repealing the Control Act. The chair's recommendation will be to pass this measure as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Nishihara. Chair goes aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Rose. Aye. Senator Tavella. Aye. And motions adopted. Thank you, members. Next is SB 2435, uh, relating to the important ag land qualified ag cost tax credit, um, extending the deadline uh, that expired on 12-31-2021 to 12-31-2031. Uh, chair's recommendation will be to vote, uh, will be to pass as is. Any uh, discussion? Chair votes aye. Vice Chair? Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. And Senator Rhodes. Reservations. Senator Fabella. Senator Fabella. Senator Fabella. He's frozen. Aye. There he is. Thank you. Aye. Most Motion's adopted. Thank you, members. Uh, aye. We got you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, SB 2962, uh, proposing an amendment to the Green Amendment to the Constitution. We uh, considered this last year. On this one, members, um, I'd like to uh, make a few amendments. I want to add the fundamental right, quote unquote, to the language, and also add wording so that it applies to quote unquote, present and future generations. Also, I wanna clean up the language around climate and add quote unquote, healthy native ecosystems and beaches. And then also I want to explain the traditional relationship in Hawaii of the grounding of the native Hawaiian to the Aina. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Vice Chair. Okay. Um... Motion to pass it with amendments. Chair goes aye. Vice Chair goes with reservations. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Aye. Senator Favela. Senator Favela. Here. Reservations. Okay. Motions adopted. Thank you, members. Moving on to uh, SB 2947 related to agricultural enterprises. Chair's recommendation will be to pass as is. Any questions or concerns? Chair votes aye. Vice Chair. Okay, uh, pass with uh, res uh, as is. Chair's aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Ocasio. Reservation. Reservation. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Favela. Reservations. Motions adopted. Thank you. Thank you, members. And for SB 3363, relating to wastewater treatment improvements in the County of Hawaii, a chair's recommendation will be to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Vice Chair. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair goes aye. Of the members present, any voting at reservations or uh, opposition? Reservations. Okay. Reservations for Senator Rhodes. Uh, all others voting aye. Thank you, members. Motions adopted. Thank you, members. And for the remaining measures, that would be SB 2353, SB 2357, SB 2837, SB 2950, and SB 2988. We will defer decision making until Monday, February 14th at 2 p.m. in room 224 and also video conference. 
So uh, we'll have to adjourn this meeting now. Thank you very much, members, and thank you to the public for your participation. Aloha.